Jason Anderson of the Sacramento Bee with us. Always great to have you on, Jason. We appreciate you. How much of this stuff uh, with Ben Simmons and the Philadelphia 76ers is just noise? Were there ever really any substantial discussions between Philadelphia and Sacramento? Uh, yeah, I think um, in the in the early stages there certainly were. Um, I you know I don't I don't think it's just noise. I think there's uh, I think there's there's potential for these two teams to get together on a, a deal that makes sense for both sides. Um, I think that was the case in the beginning, um, but you know really it feels like not a lot has changed. I mean I think six weeks ago I had sources telling me that yes the Kings are interested in Ben, uh, the Sixers are, are going to want. De'Aaron or Tyrese as part of that deal and that the Kings wouldn't be willing to give up De'Aaron or Tyrese. Um, and, and, you know, six weeks later, here we are, and, and it's kind of the same situation. But I think that that reflects uh, just the situation in Philly and, and, you know, the asking price, which everyone has kind of kind of scoffed at. And, and, you know, multiple teams have just sort of walked away from the table. So, um, you know, I think the holding pattern we've seen and, uh, the report we saw yesterday from Sam, you know, saying that these teams haven't talked in weeks. I don't. That doesn't surprise me. Um, I think you know Daryl Morey knows Monty McNair very well from their time together in Houston. Um, I think I think Morey has a, a pretty good idea of what the Kings are are willing to offer or not offer. And um, you know, I think when reality sets in in, in Philly, um, I, I think that he, he may have to come back to the table and, and consider, you know, some of these offers that are a little bit more reasonable, um, in which case you may see, you know, a couple of teams uh, that, have, that have backed away uh, possibly get back into the mix. So, Jason, and shout out to my man, Jason Anderson. That's my guy. Glad to have you on the show. Yes, sir. Do you – do you – are we on – point here when we have this this universal pick that we have here of Bagley, Buddy, and some picks. Do you think that's what the Kings are offering, or is there something that maybe we're missing that they're offering um, now they got Tristan Thompson or, you know, maybe uh, I don't know, Harrison Barnes might be in there instead of Buddy Hill. Yeah. Is, is there is there another possible deal that they could be having with, uh, with, with Phoenix? Or, excuse me, Philadelphia? Uh, yeah, no, I think there are. I think you know. I think we we know they're they're willing to uh, to include Buddy and Marvin in a deal and and draft picks. Um, we don't know with specificity which of the other parts they they might be willing to include. Whether that's a Harrison, uh, you know, Tristan Thompson certainly could, I guess, be a factor. Davion Mitchell, uh, perhaps. Um, one interesting thing about Davion, whose name has kind of come up here and there, is that, um, you know, these guys from from the the most recent draft are not eligible to be traded until Saturday. Um, So, you know, if whether you're looking at the Kings or the Warriors or, or, you know, really any other team that might be looking to include a guy uh, that they they just picked up in the draft, um, that that would have to wait a couple of more days before that could happen. So, um, no, I, I think, you know, Marvin and Buddy, uh, and, and picks is, is kind of the, the way it was laid out to me um, early on. But that doesn't mean, you know, that, that if you come back now and say, okay, well, how about Harrison and Buddy? Or how about Harrison and Marvin? Or, you know, um, maybe you want to put Davey on in there with, with you know, two other guys. Um, you could do that. The money works. Um, and then, you know, maybe – Maybe the Sixers feel like you know the the pot has been sweetened a little bit, so that that may be you know maybe a little bit of a wild card uh, that, that uh, Monty has to play um, when and if uh, you know these conversations get uh, just a little bit more realistic in terms of of what the Sixers are willing to take back. I think I think potentially there are a couple of deals with Sacramento um, that, that really do make sense for Philly, whether it's it's. Um, Buddy and Marvin, Buddy and Harrison, um, whether Davion is included there or not, um, you know, we'll see. But, the, you know, the, you got to remember, Girl was the architect of, of, you know, those Houston teams that were leading the league in, in three point attempts every year at like 40, 42, 45 three pointers a game. And last year, Philly, I believe, was like 24th in the league at about 30 attempts per game. Hmm. So, you know, I, I you know I, I think that I think somebody like Buddy certainly has a lot of appeal. Um, 
put, you know, Harrison can shoot the three. Davion uh, shot it very well last year at Baylor, uh, shot it even better in summer league. So um, you, you may be able to pitch them on the upside there. Um, whether the Kings, you know, want to part with Davion um, already or not is, is maybe another question. But uh, there are, um, I, I think there are multiple paths uh, towards a, a potential deal here. Jason Anderson of the Sacramento Bee with us here on on, on D-Lo and KC. And, and, and Jason, you're a reporter, as good as they come. But I'm going to ask your opinion on something. Does, does Ben Simmons make the Kings better? You know, knowing that you've got – and you, you, you laid out a variety of different scenarios there. And you could pick whichever one you want. But does does Ben make the Kings better? Yeah, I think he does. Um, you know, you would have to figure out some things in terms of, you know, the shooting and the spacing and, and ball handling, um, things like that. But, you know, we, we've talked – We've talked uh, a lot about how bad the Kings were defensively last season, and if they, you know, if they're better defensively, they're potentially a playoff team. And and you know, if they're a lot better defensively, then you know, you you start to slide them up um, the ladder a little bit. And and so yeah, no, I think I think Ben does make them better. He, um, you could potentially have some issues with. Uh, perimeter shooting depending on what you give up in this deal if, if you know it were to come to fruition but um i just think you have to figure that out um and and you know ben can certainly handle the ball um he can you know fox is is um fox really shoots the three pretty well in spot up situations um as i think you guys have talked about in the past and um so if you know if you've got somebody like ben or, or tyrese and you've got Fox off the ball getting into kind of spot-up situations. Maybe you make up a little bit for some of that. And, you know, I, my sense has been for quite some time now that um, the Kings are they're willing to give up a little something offensively to get better de- defensively. And at pretty much every move they've made this offseason uh, has been focused on the defensive end of the floor. Um, they are confident that, you know, with Fox's abilities and, and Halliburton's abilities and, um, you know, some of the other guys here that they, uh, you know, they, they can be good offensively. They can figure that side out, but they just absolutely have to get better on defense. And, and you know, Ben moves the needle there, uh, unlike most guys in the league. So, um, yeah, I do think it makes them better. So here's a follow-up question to that, though, Jason, because I was going to ask you, does he make them better? Yes, I agree with you. But does he make them better if you're getting rid of a Tyrese Halliburton or even a Davion Mitchell? Because right now, personally, I wouldn't move him for Davion Mitchell right now. But Davion, Davion or Tyrese are part of the deal. Does that make the Kings better just by having Ben Simmons that way? Well, that's tougher. Um, you know, if you're if you're talking about Ty in, in particular, that's a tougher question to answer. Um, you know, but but potentially, I you know, it does. I mean, if you're, I don't know. I mean, I, I what Buddy or Marvin or Buddy or, or Harrison are going to have to be in this deal to make the money work. So mm-hmm. you know, I think you're giving up one of those two guys in addition to like a Ty or a Davion. Um, you know, at some point, you, at some point, yeah, it does. Uh, the, the returns are diminished. I think um, mm-hmm. if if you're if you're giving up too much, if you're giving up the wrong piece, if you're, you know, I think they could, I think they could make it work if they've still, they've still got uh, Ty and or Buddy. Uh, you know, in this league, we have to remember he's still got to be able to shoot the three, and um, the, the Kings could start to have some problems if you end up giving up, you know, two or more of those guys who, who they depend on to space the floor for them right now. So um, um, it, it's a good question that, that you're raising. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think if, if Halliburton goes out in that deal, I don't know, maybe it's a toss up whether, whether they actually, because you buddy would have to go too. you know, I'd be more comfortable if there was some other way to, or Harrison, I guess could, could go um, instead of buddy. So maybe you have Fox buddy, Barnes, Ben, and Holmes. I mean, that's still that's still pretty good. Um, uh, so you know, yeah, that, you you do raise a good question. That's something the Kings are, are going to have to keep in mind. I don't know, you know, with Davion 
I don't know. I'm I'm just so intrigued by him and what he can do defensively that that I want to see it. But you know, I don't know that you pass on an opportunity to to get an All NBA All NBA defensive team type of guy, three time All Star. He's 25. He's got four years left on his contract. Um, you know, I don't know that you. I, I don't think you pass up the opportunity to get a guy like that if you know if if the Sixers are going to demand that that Davion be included. And that, that's a possibility. I mean, that is a possibility. But I, I think if you're the Kings, you probably still make that deal. Well, that's the beauty of Jason's reporting and James's reporting and Sam Amick's reporting is Tyrese doesn't appear to be a part of these conversations, uh, as all three of you uh, ha- have reported. J- Jason, you are also the first person who told us. Yeah, guys, that Pascal Siakam thing, that ain't real. That's not <laughs> happening. Um, you told us that on the radio show. You told us that privately. Of course, you wrote about it in the Sacramento Bee. Is there another – I'm not asking you to reveal too much. Is there something we don't know about? Like, is there a deal out there? Maybe you're hearing rumblings about Is there a team out there, a player? Like, is there anything – else out there besides these ones we've maybe conjured up in our imaginations or which seems to be the Siakam thing or, or the ones that have real legs like the Ben Simmons thing. Is there anything else out there that, that, that you're hearing or we don't know about yet? I think there's a lot we don't know about. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I mean, that was even stressed to me um, in some of the early talks about Ben and Pascal and, and you know, the, Siakam stuff was real. The Kings are and, and presumably would still be interested uh, there. But as I started to dig into it a little bit, it just um, kind of became clear that this was not going to be the number one that he he didn't want to be moved. Um, I was told that he he was he was he was not looking to be moved. And, and uh, Toronto, while um, you know they were were listening uh, to offers and, and having those conversations, they were not. Um, not considered to, to really be looking to move him either. So, yeah, the, the Kings' interest was real, uh, you know, but, but those talks just, you know, I don't, I don't think Pascal's going anywhere right now. And yeah. um, Sacramento was, was said to be uh, not a likely destination, even if um, something were to happen. So, um, yeah, there, there, are, there are things. Uh, they've, they've had probably a thousand conversations that we don't know anything about. Um, you know, that doesn't mean any of those things are, are – going to happen as we know you know most trade talks uh don't don't get to the finish line um and so they have those conversations daily um i think the last couple of weeks uh have been fairly quiet here um and and you know i think there's a little bit of a holding pattern where the Sixers are have been waiting to see i you know i think the Sixers want to get Damian Lillard out of all this um but you know that that's looking increasingly unlikely to happen um, now. So Maury, I think, has a couple things in his back pocket, um, you know, and, and the Kings and what they they would be willing to offer. Certainly, I, I believe is is one of those things. Um, you know, if, does Portland come back and offer CJ? We don't really know. I think that you know, if you can't get Dame, if you can't get somebody like Brad Beal, um, if you know, if the, the Blazers were willing to part with CJ, that's probably about as, as well as, as Philly can do here right now. Um, but we don't know, you know, we don't even know if Portland's willing to give up CJ for him. So um, then if that doesn't happen, then I think the Sixers really have to start looking at, at Sacramento uh you know, you look at some of the. There are new odds today. Uh, we've all become. Oh, again. Oh, boy. Oh, good. Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, Blazers are number one at uh, two to one odds, followed by Minnesota and then Sacramento with the Warriors and Spurs. And if you really dig into those, yeah, I think, you know, the Blazers, whether they, you know, if, if the Blazers put CJ on the table, that, that's probably the deal that gets done. Um, but after that, you know, I don't, I don't know if Minnesota really has a better package to offer. Um, the Warriors could, but I don't, you know, I don't know how much sense that really makes, um, you know, so I, I don't, you know, the Warriors definitely could, could get involved. They have a lot of, uh, of <clears throat> pieces they could throw in there. The Spurs, I don't, you know, <clears throat> I don't know if the Spurs really can put together uh, a package that's really that much more enticing than what the Kings can put together. If you're talking about guys like, you know, DeJounte Murray and, 
Derek White and Devin Vassell. And, you know, I, I just don't know. Minnesota is, is – they don't want to give up Carl Anthony Towns or Anthony Edwards or D'Angelo Russell. So you'd be looking at, like, Beverly <laughs> and Beasley and McDaniel. Come on, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you, you start to look at that and, and think, you know, what's Daryl going to want? And, you know, Buddy's three-point shooting – holds uh, a lot of appeal and and you know i think especially for them um so it, it you know i know a lot of people are, are talking like this thing is dead in the water but when you know it really when push comes to shove i i do think the kings are, are going to have a a competitive bid so jason real quick before you get out of here because we've been asking for your opinion that's not going to stop right now i want that jason anderson opinion training camp starts opening night starts Buddy Hill, Marvin Bagley, still on this Kings roster, in your opinion? Um, if if this Ben Simmons deal does not happen, I would say yes. I don't. I don't. You know, I'm not aware of of an, kind of an alternate, um, like Plan B for Sacramento right now. That doesn't mean there isn't one. You know, like I said, there is a holding pattern where everybody's kind of waiting on you know, waiting on this thing with Ben and with Dame and et cetera. Um, so I think everybody's sort of waiting to see how that shakes out. The Kings may have something else that they've, they're they eyeing, um, but I, I don't I'm, – if they do, I'm not aware of it. So, I, you know, at this point, based on what I know, I'm going to say that if, you know, if the Ben Simmons deal happens, Marvin and Buddy, or at least one of the two – uh, probably is is gone if the Ben Simmons deal doesn't happen with the Kings. Um, yeah, I think it's looking uh, more and more likely that, that they'll both be here. Mm. Jason, always great talking to you, my friend. Thanks for making some time for us. You too, guys. Have a great day.